two moms in two Canadian capitals. Both shopping from the same list. No, you're not getting a point. It's a marketplace price check to see who gets the bigger bill. If you think it costs you a lot to put food on the table, get ready for some sticker shock. Joellen Pamiolik is a single mom with four kids, and they like to eat. Like, this would be gone in a day, honestly. The two liter milk, it'd be gone in one morning because all of my kids eat cereal. The juice that I bought, it'd be gone, like, within an evening. Oh, it's freezing. Megan Brisebois knows what that's like. We're feeding four people, two kids and ourselves. I've got two athletes in the house, so they eat a lot. I'm constantly eating, making meals, and eating as clean as I can. They've got a lot in common, but how about those grocery bills? Hi, Megan, how are you? Hi, good, good, thanks. How are you guys? Our two moms are meeting for the first time online, ready to compare prices. Uh, I want you to meet Joellen. Joellen, this is Meg. Hi, Joellen. Hi, I'm Megan. Meg, do you yeah. mind if we just go through some of the items here? Of course, no problem. Juice. Do you have... Tropicana. We yes. have it too? All right. What'd you pay? I need to find it here. Tropicana orange juice. I paid $3.99, but it was on sale. So it, I saved $1.30. So it's usually $5.29. You got it on sale for $3.99. Yeah. Here it cost you... $11.99. No chance I would buy that. <laughs> That's crazy. Crazy doesn't end there. How much did you pay for your pickles? $5.39. And I thought that was quite expensive. <laughs> I paid $9.99. And it doesn't end at food. Okay, let's talk about shampoo. How much did you pay for that? $5.99. This one was $11.49. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. Like, I would, my kids would shower less often, maybe. Okay, laundry detergent. This one? Yep. How much did you pay? $17.99. I paid $31.99. Ouch. Ouch is right. And then we also bought a case of water. We did too. And it was four forty-nine. For a twelve, twelve pack? N uh, no, for twenty, for twenty-four. I paid twenty-nine dollars and ninety-five cents. <laughs> what? Tally it up, and Joellen pays twice as much for the same basket of goods. The only difference: Megan lives in Winnipeg. Joellen lives 2,000 kilometers north here in Iqaluit. Where high prices are a fact of life and efforts to beat them are as constant as the tundra. I'll follow you, David. Just check out the local post office. It looks more like a warehouse for Amazon. Almost everyone up here who can does order at least some groceries online. It's way cheaper. We order our rice, our cereal, our detergent, our garbage bags, our cleaning supplies, all of those items. Majority of people from Iqaluit purchase their items from Amazon, but not everyone across the north. Because it's not that. available no, to them. It's yeah. not available to them. No matter how you cut it, food is hard to come by in Canada's north, and that's why it's so expensive. Um, and Nia and Maddie, there's another pan of potatoes here. Here at the local high school, teacher Lael Kronick runs a lunch program every other day. I'm a food studies teacher, and so in our class we end up having lots of discussions about food insecurity and some of the issues students are experiencing in the school and across Nunavut. Food insecurity the state of being without reliable access to sufficient, affordable, nutritious food. Seven out of 10 kids in Nunavut go to bed hungry. Don't be silly with the cheese. Give everybody a lot of cheese. For many of these students, today's menu of caribou poutine and a salad is the best meal they'll have all day. 
We can't expect students to be successful at school if they're hungry while they're here. And this is a way we can both feed students where they already are and um, teach food skills. Back at Joe Ellen's, she's hoping our little pricing test might help make a point. It hurts to know that a child my daughter's age, who's only five, is actually hungry. It, it hurts. I can't imagine, and that's, that's, that's my daughter. <coughs> but it's the majority of kids yep. in Nunavut who are hungry. I love yep. you. Oh, I love you. Does it feel like it's Canada for you? No, it's not. I feel like we're our own country where most of Canadians don't pay attention to us or they don't understand or they don't know anything about us. If you're wondering what our government is doing about all this... Buying groceries in the north can be expensive for isolated communities that must rely on food being flown in. A program called Nutrition North Canada is supposed to make food like meat and milk, fruits and veggies more affordable. From now on, when looking at your receipt, you will know exactly what savings are passed on to you. Those subsidies were just increased to nearly a hundred million dollars a year. And they do figure into our price check. For instance, the Tropicana that costs three times as much costs even more without Nutrition North. The ground beef costs the same as in the South, thanks to those subsidies, which also lower the price of broccoli, peppers, and especially milk. Problem is, most products are not subsidized. Did you get applesauce? Yeah. I got this, Mott's. How much did you pay for that? $2.99. <laughs> I bought the exact same one, exact same one. I paid nine dollars and forty nine cents. about four. Under the Nutrition North program, when there are subsidies, they're usually given directly to the grocery stores. And in these parts, North Mart is the biggest, owned by the Northwest Company. Stores receive tens of millions of dollars every year in taxpayer money, creating a lot of suspicion about why prices are still so high. <laughs> Local Juno Award nominees, the Jerry Cans, wrote a song about it. The company that owns North Mart says they're not ripping off anyone. Hi, it's uh, Derek Reimer here at Northwest. Hi, Derek. How are you? Derek Reimer is the director of business development at the Northwest Company. We ask him repeatedly for an on-camera interview, but he'll only talk to us by phone. What are the factors that go into making food prices high in the North? The biggest one is transportation. Uh, most of the goods have to be brought up by air. And he says there's the huge cost of running their stores and warehouses. In a kilowatt, we pay uh, electricity costs of about 48 cents a kilowatt hour. That compares to about seven cents what you would pay in Winnipeg. But given all the suspicion, we ask analysts to dig into Northwest public records, and it seems subsidies are passed on to shoppers. And the company's profits, about four cents on every dollar, are about the same as other major grocery chains. It's a broader issue than just uh, food prices. Tell that to people like Joe Ellen. Every family should be able to, just like any other Canadian, walk into a store and buy $3 milk and a $3 box of cereal so your, your kid can eat in the morning. To understand the animosity, know where it's coming from. The Inuit are some of the strongest people on Earth, surviving more than a thousand years in one of its harshest climates. But after the Second World War, the federal government began forcing Inuit to give up their nomadic ways, settling them in new communities with alien systems of education, healthcare, and economics. 
jobs were scarce, and many became dependent on social assistance. There's so many amazing things that people do here. Pauline Pemick is a CBC colleague who works here in Iqaluit. She's heard what Southerners say about life in the North. Why do they live there? Why don't they just move? Why are they trying? You do hear that. You hear people yeah, say that, particularly and, in the South. Yeah. And my answer to that is it's our home. It's where we live. It's not that, you know, we can just up and go and make a new life somewhere else. These people are ingrained in their environment, the, the wildlife, the nature. I mean, Iqaluit wasn't even a city. It was built by the federal government and then Inuit ended up maintaining it. So we didn't even, we ended up taking something we didn't even want to take care of, but it ended up on our hands. So now we're here. And I think that there's a lot of struggles, but at the same time, Inuit really per persevere through that and they do it together. Still, it's a legacy of distrust, with some of the poorest people in Canada paying some of the highest food prices. This is your marketplace. We're north of the tree line in Iqaluit, getting ready for a hunt. And he just bought this yesterday, so... Just bought this yesterday? Yes. Okay, so don't break it. For Inuit, country food, as they call it, seal, caribou, arctic char, is central to their culture and way of life, and so is sharing it. But as we head out on the sea ice, there are no guarantees. So now it's just a waiting game? Waiting game. With anything you catch? I give everything away. You give everything away? That's how we were, like raised. We, sh we share everything we catch. Northern food may be the preferred option, but a lot of people up here are forced to rely on Southern-owned grocery stores, where food prices can be twice what they are in the South, even with $100 million a year in federal subsidies from Nutrition North. Many Inuit are struggling to make ends meet. Folks like Tommy Kelly, an artist, hoping to sell his carvings at CBC's office in Iqaluit. Everybody's waiting for payday, Tommy. Thanks. So this is how you make your money? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I've been carving since I was seven years old. Carving since you were seven years old? Yeah, my first one was a small seal, and I sold it for 25 bucks. Oh, wow. And I bought three grocery bags. You bought three grocery bags with the first thing you ever carved? Yeah. Wow. It was awesome. The numbers in Nunavut are stark. The average cost of groceries for a family is $23,904 a year. And yet nearly 40% of Inuit adults earn less than $20,000 annually. Combine that with rents between three and $7,000 a month, and the concept of food insecurity becomes very real. I'm just gonna watch you do it if that's yeah. all right. Yeah. Sheila Lumsden is more fortunate than many putting food on the table. This is our traditional food. We get satiated with by not only our stomachs, but with our spirit as well. She's invited us for a feast of country food, including some uyuk, or boiled seal meat. I did manage to find ribs. Mm -hmm. uh, what I was saying to my wiksak, my fiance, is that there's hardly any uksuk. Uh, fat. Normally when we make uyuk, we like more fat <laughs> with the meat and you'll see why uh, once once we cook it. I mean, you're, you're saying to me one of the reasons you, you hunt and use country food, harvest country food, is to stay in touch with your history and, and be part of your culture. Mm -hmm. But when you look at what groceries cost here compared to how much people make, does that also play into the calculation? Most definitely. What's been ingrained in me it, from my father is the desire to not only eat well, but be mindful to not spend too much money on food. Okay. This is the Louis Vuitton of Arctic luggage. Rubbermaid action package. <laughs> 
Sheila is a good example of the lengths people go to avoid northern crisis with regular trips to Ottawa to stock up. Have a good flight. Thank you. You're welcome. And a heavy dependence on Amazon. Okay, so what's in here? Rice. Amazon. Rice is coming from Amazon. Peppercorns. Uh, usually Amazon, but because I had room in my luggage, Loblaws. Loblaws. Let yeah. me go to your fridge. Oh, okay. okay. Um, ketchup. Amazon. Uh, HP sauce. Uh, Amazon. What's going on that a company that, like the, a big multinational company like Amazon is the one making some groceries and other items more affordable for you here? than the actual program designed to do that by the federal government. I don't know. I know. It, it's, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to respond. I just, I love Amazon. <laughs> it also helps to be partners with a good hunter. So the last time I had caribou was in Tukta While we wait for the seal ribs to cook, Sheila's fiance, Johnny, carves us an appetizer of caribou. Try that first. Like, uh, try it by itself. Yeah. yeah. That's refreshing. Like to see a Kublanak uh, man enjoy the taste of our traditional food. The history in the North, a proud history, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of surviving mm -hmm. um, under very difficult conditions. What goes through your mind when you look today that there are people? who can't feed themselves. What do you it, think? It pisses me off. Yeah. It really does piss me off. And I don't know if I can say that you on sure TV. You sure can. But uh, yeah, it, it upsets me greatly. Back on the sea ice, they joke that harvesting seal is another form of grocery shopping. And it certainly can be as expensive. So what do you pay for? You pay for gas? Gas. How much does a skidoo cost for you here? 15000 Bullets cost? 30 to $40. You have to buy or build a kamutik? About over $1,000 for to build the hamutik. Yeah. The federal government knew it needed to do more to lower food costs. And so it's just revamped the Nutrition North program with new grants to help hunters pay for their harvesting, higher subsidies for more food products, and even a few non-food items like diapers. But many here know it's still not enough to solve food insecurity. And if not, why not? In a country where accessible, nutritious food seems like a basic right. This is your marketplace. The brutal beauty of Nunavut speaks to the hard life of many who live here. Food is expensive to harvest and costly to buy, even with 100 million in federal subsidies from Nutrition North. And with seven out of 10 kids going to bed hungry, food insecurity is now at its highest level since they started keeping track. We're in Ottawa to ask why isn't more being done about it? How are you? I'm David. Hi, David, Yvonne. Nice to oh, meet really you. Really good. Thanks. Yvonne Jones is a Liberal MP from Labrador. There's Cape St. Louis. There's Mary's Harbor. OK, so this is where I grew up. Yeah. And today I live here in Goose Bay. Jones has been asked by Prime Minister Trudeau to help find a way forward on food security. Part of the solution for the federal government has been this Nutrition North subsidy. Um, it's been around for eight years, and in that time, the needle's actually gone the other way, that the hunger has actually got worse. So why should anybody have confidence that Nutrition North remains any part of the solution now? Nutrition North is one component, and that is where the problem has been in the past. Government so it is a problem. It's been a problem. It, Nutrition it, North has been an issue. No, Nutrition North is one component. The problem has been thinking that Nutrition North alone could fix food insecurity. It can't fix food insecurity alone. 
there has to be accumulation of programs and services that accompany it. And this is where governments in the past, in my opinion, have failed. But you've been part of the government for four years now. Mm -hmm. This is still a problem. It is still a problem, but it's one that's getting addressed. And I think that's the key piece right now. One of the things that we heard in the North was about what is covered by Nutrition North. Why subsidize something like an exotic dragon fruit, but not toilet paper? That's a good question. It's a really good question. And I always, I have always said it's not necessarily the people who live in the North who are going to eat the exotic kiwi fruit, but they're going to need to have access to personal hygiene products. They're going to need to have access to diapers for their kids. That's why the list now includes a few non-food items. And government is investing more in infrastructure and innovation while promising more to come. Nutrition North cannot be a stagnant program. It has to be an evolving program. If we're not prepared to do that, we are going to fail. And it, despite and all of our failures, best... Failure is a bad option here. Absolutely. Failure means people go hungry. And they are going hungry. People are going hungry. What do you think? You're in government and you were saying that. Because I'd be lying if I didn't recognize it. We'll be tracking her promises and those prices back here on Baffin Island, where innovation is already taking hold. I think it's really neat. Like, there's so many different plants. Like, everywhere. I love it. The next generation trying the next thing. There's all these cool looking puppy worms. There's the different types of kale, and it's like a good variety of foods, so. And if you were to go to the store and buy something like this instead. Super expensive and not as fresh. And like we get to try foods that like they don't even ship up here because we grow them ourselves, so. That's really cool.